and also I'm quite sure that you're happy to be here as well. Okay. Um, so my name is Hamid Abdullah, Ahmed Abdelaziz. Um, I'm an MVP um, and I'm uh, and also MCT um, for the M365 um, Power Platform. Um, and also uh, in my course, PKI trainer is Fun Shaka really. So I think he will be joining very late um, because of some unforeseen circumstances. So he should, uh, if uh, it is expected that he take the fourth section, uh, which is today, and then I take the next section, which is uh, next week, but um, because of the unfortunate circumstances, so he's able to join today. So, so today, while we are be looking at um, fundamentals of customer engagement, which is the M365 CRM, okay? Uh, before I start, I just want to hear a view for anyone have, you know, have experience dealing with the M365. Has anyone? Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, this is Aziz Adebayo. Yes, I have. Hi, um, yeah, so I have an experience with um, 365 CE engagement. OK, C that's good. customer engagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Any other one? So it's good to have ideas so about your background, just to let us know um, how aware so that you can go to technical. <laughs> so this okay, is actually for that um, course. OK. Hi. Yes, please. Uh, so I have a bit of um, experience with Dynamic 365. Uh, I I am actually um, a tester, so I understand a bit of it. Not very much, though. Oh, OK. Yeah. So nice. Nice one. I'll really nice to hear that. So another person just to hear from a few more people. Okay, so I guess we can all start here. So, so yeah, I think people who are still trying to join are waiting in the lobby. Let me show them. I'm gonna search. Okay, so um, here, sorry to take your time too much. So here we're gonna take um, training regarding the customer engagement app. And for those who are looking for for exam also, um, this training is not to um, go into deep dive. Okay, so of course, if you have to go into full training sections regarding this, it's gonna take more than just an hour or two hours. So it's gonna take more than eight a little like, in normal standard uh, training section is eight hours uh, for this guy for this course and it's going to be like two or three days okay so um uh, this is why we are taking up on this because we have seen a lot of uh, requests from people and then we've seen that uh, people actually need to understand what's dynamics and i've seen people walking up to me they want to learn more about dynamics this is why so how they, can they go about it and that's why I wanted to start this section. So, and of course, we are happy that we are beginning this up. And also as part of uh, it's here, um, um, you know, uh, cost rules, you know, Microsoft exams are based on uh, rule-based exams and which is quite good. So you have functional consultants. So you need to be specialist in that aspect. If you have technical consultants, you need to be specialist about that. If you have solution architect, I have to be specialist about that, you know, in that aspect as well. So, so every exam now is now role based, and that's why we are taking this course as, you know, uh, the way it is uh, de de defined by Microsoft. Okay, so you see that is fundamental um, customer engagement. I'm this is why of course uh, fundamental uh, customer engagement. Okay, so it's an exam topic. 
And um, so we're going to share resources after this class, um, after the whole section, three Saturdays. So it's going to take three days, three Saturdays. Um, I'm going to treat all the apps on diet. OK, so uh, let's move on. OK, so uh, but just a little bit introduction about me. I'm a business application developer, um, like I mentioned earlier. I'm a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional and a, a Microsoft Certified Trainer on the business application aspect. So, so uh, they have um, over 10 years of technical experience, uh, experiences. Um, so it's been a while now that been, we have been on this line of uh, uh, activities as well. So I'm currently staying in Lagos, in Nigeria, and I love traveling, watching football, and playing games as well. So I'm sure tonight, <laughs> Those are Chelsea fans and um, uh, the people are not Man City fans no, because of Chelsea that are now uh, Man City fan. <laughs> right. So tonight, um, it's going to be nice. So, um, Finshaw is also a subject matter expert in Power Platform. Um, it's a wonderful and expert as well. It's a trainer, certified trainers, and has several years of experience. So he'll be joining us maybe next week if, if not if he's not able to join us today. So like watching football and traveling as well. So here we'll be covering what is uh the M35 of for sales, customer um services, marketing, fish services, um, project operation as well. So these are encompasses in when we talk about the M365 fundamentals or, or customer engagement. So we uh, after this section, I'm going to have a uh, section for ERP. So um, we have some trainers who is going to talk about that. OK, so but in this section is a CRM section. So the CRM comprises of the sales, uh, marketing, uh, customer service, um, fee services and previous operation as well. So what is the agenda for today? So we're going to examine what is um, OK. Uh, under sales, we're going to examine what is sales, and then uh, we're going to talk about how to manage um, use uh, the sales activities. I mean, sales modules to to manage life cycles with sales processes, and then uh, we're going to review additional sales uh, applications, and also we are going to, you know, can show you some demos regarding this, and then how you can create your uh, demo environment as well. So that's very important. So they can start something on your own as well. OK, so um, also we're going to look at the customer services, customer service module, um, which is um, also we're going to understand what is the customer service and how is it prominent in Nigeria today and um, so in the environment. So and the, also some components about it. So. Um, demo and some other functions. We're going to look at that uh, marketing as well. So uh, the capabilities of marketing um, and, and so on and so forth. Here, fee services. What is fee services? I know a lot of us have thought about this. Some of us have not. Some of us have thought about this. A lot of us have don't know what is fee service about, but they know that it's a damn CRM, right? So how is it prominent as well? We're going to look at that. Okay. So project operations is part of the new um solutions microsoft introduced uh this year okay so before now we used to have a project service uh project service of uh, automation which is psa so but now that has been integrated and then give a new name which is project operations and that's more reason why we are taking uh this class as well to see so um here we want to talk about sales right and then what is Diamond 365 for sales? OK, so um, of course, you know, every, um, you know, business has some kind of sales processes and then sales engagements uh, start from, you know, from start to finish and how they handle some um, sales activities in the environment. OK, so um, especially for organizations that involve in the sales activities, 
uh, daily, I mean, uh, you know, daily on a daily basis as well. Okay. So what does Dynamitis 5 uh, for sales actually uh, encompasses and how it can be, a um, company can adapt this uh, solution as well. So, so Dynamitis 5 for sales enables uh, you know, sellers to build strong uh, customers relationship and close our deals faster, okay? So it's about digital sellings, uh, uh, selling tools that actually helps the salespeople to better understand uh, which customers and sales opportunity uh, they should be focusing on, okay? So uh, this is apps being developed by, uh, it's a Microsoft solutions, okay, uh, built on you know, through a build on Power Platform, uh, which provides every source person in every organization with capability to analyze, act, and automate a digital setting across uh, organization as well. Okay, so, uh, so basically, it means that in the in the source process, in the source activities of a company, so uh, they can use the analytics file for sales to actually, you know. Uh, embed some, you know, sales activities like uh, invoicing, quotation, um, also uh, in terms of um, lead and opportunities. So in terms of all this, you wanted to be able to, you know, convert, um, you know, uh, your lead and qualify your lead into opportunity, right? So when you go to, for example, uh, when you go to, um, to market a show, or to market your uh, your products, of course you try to meet a lot of people and share your contacts with them, and also you try to familiarize uh, yourself with them, exchange uh, the card, maybe a complimentary card and all that. So, so after this, what do we do? What do you, what do we do with these cards that we collected or the contact we collected from from these people in the trade show? Okay, so it's uh, enabled to engage uh, these people. I mean the people you met. Uh, in what you sell, in what you, you know, uh, what to deal with, right? It's a sales process. It's part of the sales process as well. Trying to, you know, exchange uh, contacts. Uh, later on, you trying to contact them if they're actually interested in products, right? So the I'm telling you, for sales enable you to engage your uh, potential um, uh, customers, uh, so to say, an opportunity. Um, uh, to you know, to engage them in your sales processes as well, and enable them to sell your product to the customer. So the, one of the things you wanted to find out is that if they are interested in your product or not. Okay, so the MTS is why I give you uh, that kind of tool that leverages kind of solutions that are able to leverage on that um, part of it. So um, the what we call the sales process, right? And what is sales process in the MTS is five? Okay, so. The specific process stages and terminologies used by organizations are very based on, you know, the factors like the industry and also sales strategy and then product offering or the types of customer they target with. Okay. So the process sales process is a guide or map that organizations can implement uh, to assist uh, the um, sellers during, you know, the life cycle processes. Okay. So when you talk about how you're able to qualify lead, develop and propose and close the deal, how do you close the deal? The how do you um, purchase a lead? Uh, I mean, how do you uh, pursue a lead? Okay. Um, so like I said, if you, if you have attended a trade show and then you, you try to um, present a product for sales, um, or it could be in a trade fair, what I mean. That's what I mean. Okay. So if the person is interested in your product, or not, you try to find out by you know contacting the person. After you must have you know get a person in contact. Um, such person can be like um, you know involved in the processes. Okay, so other person is in is interested or not. So you, you still want to communicate with the person. So so if the person is interested in your product, what happened? So you can qualify that person uh, as a lead. Okay, so if the person is not even interested, so that person can be seen as a unqualified lead, right? So from that process, that doesn't mean that you cannot continue to engage the person from time to time, 
right? So on this aspect, it means that you can always, you know, engage um, people in your sales processes, right, from start to finish. So we're going to talk about this, um, you know, uh, as we move on. So what I want to to uh, to talk about the key terminology what we use when it comes to them identify for sales um, solutions, right? So we talk about accounts, activities, uh, contact, um, customer, lead, and opportunity. So what do you mean by account? A lot of people quite get confused when we talk, when we talk about accounts. They might try to understand it as maybe an account number of a bank, of your bank, you know. So, but in dynamics, what do we mean by account? It means an organization, right? a company, right? So that you have established, you are trying to establish or you have established relationship with, okay? And that's what it means by um, accounts. So, so when you say, whenever you see accounts in dynamics, it means a company or organization, okay? So you can always engage the company or uh, your, the organizations as a vendor, as a customer, okay? So uh, it, it depends. Different kind of organizations has different uh, names. They call it the uh, um, organizations or a customer or vendor, right? So then we have what we call activities, which is um, activities involve phone calls, emails, um, appointments, and, and so on and so forth. How do you engage your customer with these activities? So you met somebody in a trade in a fair and you, were you able to contact the person either by phone or by email or make an appointment with the person? So these are activities uh, that involve in the establish, establishing a relationship with the person. So this is typical example of how you can engage your customer with Dynamics 365 for sales. And Having that record activities, having, having that activity being recorded in the M365 is very key to manage uh, that aspect of relationship. So when we talk about contacts, right? So a contact is represent a single individual, right? So men often want to uh, relate such accounts, I mean, such um, contact to, to an account. But the account, like I said, is an organization. So if I have a relationship Establish relationship with, with a company, so I must have somebody that I'm that I'm communicating with in terms of you know trying to get the business out of that organization. So uh, that person is what is a, is a is a contact. So here we have a what we call primary contact and the other contact. The primary contact are the person you actually you know uh, be communicating with and try to um, to get the business uh, in that company. So that's what it means, yeah. So what I mean by a customer, the customer can either be the contacts or majorly, uh, most often accounts, which is organizations, right? So in a typically speaking, uh, in a business or to business scenario, this is what we call a, a company organization. So here we also have what we call lead. Uh, a lead represents someone with who uh, uh, someone who is interested in your products and then uh, someone who you are selling your products with uh, to, okay? So it could be a new person or it, it could be a new person or it could be uh, an existing person you have known already, okay? So this is uh, typical a lead. So a lead is somebody that have interest in your products or what your services as well all your services, okay? So when we talk about opportunity, opportunity uh, is a lead, it, like a lead, uh, it's a, a potential sales, okay? So it's, a, it's not an individual, but a potential sales, something that you intend to sell, like, okay, I am interested in your product as a lead. Uh, I've been qualified as a lead. You've qualified, qualified the person as a lead, and um, the person is in your, interested in your product. How do you know that the person is interested in your product? So he will tell you to send um, a quotation about what you're selling. And um, if the person ha eventually asks you to send an invoice for what you were trying, you're about to sell, which means the person has fully qualified and is interested to, to buy uh, your product. So 
And sending invoice doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the customer can still buy at the end of the day. So the customers can change uh, the mind that, okay, we have other people we are dealing with. They can actually, actually send, I mean, set to us at the very lower level, at the very lower price. So they can change the mind. It doesn't mean you have actually sold the deal, right? But that is the potential, okay? It's an opportunity for you to be able to sell the product, right? So, so when we talk about opportunity, is is more of uh, prospects than lead, right? It contains more about how you're able to track the customer for a longer period of time. Okay. So let me quickly also introduce to some product catalog. So these are key things that you need to know when you talk about sales for them. This is five, and here. It's a collection of records, just like it was defined here. Collection of records that interacts with opportunities, quotes, orders, and invoices to facilitate a management of products, price lists, discount, and, and so forth. Of course, a product, what you're selling, was, whatever you are selling, it has to be a product. That's the services, it's a product as well. We can consider it as a product. So, because every an item has a price, either services or a, a tangible product they have uh, a price. So in, in Dynamics, we consider it as a product, even though it's a service, we consider it as a product. There's, what I mean by consider it as a product is like because you yeah, have to be a price tag to that, whatever you, whatever you are rendering to that uh, to customers. So we also have what we call quotes, okay, quotation. Say, you just add what we know, normally we know that when somebody's interested in a product, you're trying to send a quotation to the person, try to see what you have on the price list and so on. So this is very, very key uh, to sell your, your product as well. So an order, an order means that, okay, you send uh, a quotation. So the person place an order to buy your product. So it confirm your request to buy your products. What do we do? So you place an order, right? And then at the end of the day, you, you generate an invoice for the person. So then you sell, uh, eventually when the person is sold uh, to the customer, you become a fully qualified, I mean, fully person uh, uh, customer in the organization. So, and also we have the sales pipeline, which is like uh, uh, where uh, a prospects are involved in processes. Okay. So I'm going to show you uh, yeah, after this slide, um, the next slide is going to contain how these key terminologies works, right? So how many people uh, you are dealing with in terms of what is expected for you to close such uh, deals uh, within the months, weeks, days, and year as well? And how the sales rep people, sales reps, were able to reach out to, to their sales targets Right, so in a, in every organization that involved in the products or the marketing and all that, they try to sell a sales quota for each sales rep. So this will also be determine how uh, you're able to to manage uh, your sales in the organization. So competitors, of course, you have competitors, of course, different kind of products, different kind of uh, I mean, uh, the same products are different organizations uh, dealing with the same products. So of course, then I'm mean, five allow you to search to have such records in your in the in the organization to involve them uh, yeah, as part uh, you know part of your competition to win your deal. Okay. So it's also good to know about your competitors so that for them from there you're able to uh, to have their information, you know, to know how they are making progresses so that you're able to determine how you can also introduce some things that's quite different, unique about your product, about your own organization. Okay, so here we talk about the qualified leads. What do you buy qualified lead? Like I mentioned you know, earlier. So let's say an account uh, executive reach out to, to the lead to gather more information about them and determine if relationship will be mutually beneficial. Okay, so if this is, uh, it is something that is determined that is not a good fit, such lead uh, is, can be seen as a qualified lead because 
such person does not have interest in your product. That doesn't mean that that space is totally out of your uh, contact. You can still keep the person as part of your contact because at the end of the day, the person might still have interest in products. But at that stage, at that moment, at the first stage, you have the person as what as a disqualified lead or disqualified lead. Yes. So, but if the person is determined to have interest in your products, okay. So this kind of person is a qualified lead person, okay. So here, what we talk about here is that at this stage, so this is how the sales process goes in dynamic CRM, right? The person is qualified and then it moves to the next stage. If the person is disqualified, so you don't have to move on to the next stage of the person. That person is not going to be involved in the sales process. So that person is to be kept uh, aside like a, 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 like a bench. Uh, you know, like football players usually have a reserve in bench, right? So now it's interested, right? So you continue to engage the person. So that's a qualified lead, right? So the next stage is develop stage, which is um, where you have opportunity uh, record is used to, you know, develop the details about the deal. Um, here we talk about the uh, the product and services they are interested in. And also we um, talk about the estimated revenue and the timeline in which uh, that, add, that need to be added to the to such opportunity, right? So this is how, you know, you can also involve the person because the person is a qualified lead. So when you talk about the proposed stage, so what I'm talking about this, this process is it depends on how the organization can be able to, uh, on every organization have their own sales processes. Okay, so this is just a typical example of, you know, the sale processes uh, you can also adapt or the Microsoft has adapt in the CRM as act of the box solution. Okay, so once the person um, deal is ready, uh, a quotation is added to the opportunity uh, that represents the uh, the formal proposal of such uh, uh, person, I mean, to the customer. So you can also see that person as, um, you know, as part of the sales, sales process as well. So because you are proposing, uh, because the person is qualified, interested in your, uh, in your products, and of course, um, you are already dealing with the person as well. So here in terms of, um, uh, in terms of closing, right? So the person place an order, you fulfill the order and invoice is created, right? So when the customer agrees to, to the quotation, an order is what is being placed, is being generated. The quotes and the opportunity associated with that, um, uh, associated with that order are closed, right? So after the order is fulfilled, an invoice is generated to the bill to I mean to build the customers and ways where. So this typical uh, typically key terminology as well. You can actually, um, you know, um, involve uh, using the M365 for sales. So here we want to talk about the uh, what you can do further in addition to what we have said with sales, the M365 for sales. So one of the things you can uh, do is like can sell smarter with contextual, uh, contextual uh, insights. So there's what we call sales insights, right? So with automated lead and opportunity scoring, you can spend more time negotiating deals and less time trying to identify the potential, um, um, you know, uh, opportunity. Um, as you communicate get with your customers uh, like um, like uh, like activities using activities to communicate with your customer emails phone calls sometimes emails are analyzed to allow sellers to be able to be more proactive with with uh, future communication so you are automatically providing uh, provided with personalized um, you know talking points and then the next thing you wanted to do is to ensure that um, uh, the best actions are taking place, right? So with 
relationship insights can be used to to manage, uh, you know, um, sometimes can send a reminder regarding the insights about um, how many people are qualified and then how many people are, you know, still waiting. I mean, uh, have uh, still waiting to be uh, to be a potential customer. So it gives you like an insight about. Uh, what you need to do if you book an appointment with the process. So the sales insight, insight is like uh, an automated uh, artificial intelligence, like, you know, they give you insight about data, what's happening. See, if you have an appointment in two days' time, it's trying to give you a, a, mind, a reminder or if you need to qualify the person, so on and so forth. So it's a bit to build relationship with, um, you know, and engage uh, with customers, right? So you can also try to, you know, save a lot of time spending um, writing paperwork and all that, and also it can enable you to build uh, to boost your sales productivity as well. So now let's talk about a few things I uh, mentioned earlier about the AI, artificial intelligence tools that can be embedded into the time. So I remember those days where we started, uh, there's nothing like um, embedded artificial intelligence, but now Microsoft have done a lot to improve on these technologies um, by you know, integrating or involving um, this artificial intelligence in the search process in the materials file for sales. So you can always uh, see uh, these as many as act of the box features. What I mean by act of the box features uh, or act of the box is always like a standard process, like a standard uh, solutions, uh, a, a ready-made solution for Microsoft. So there's out of the box, and also there's a custom uh, features or custom uh, solutions, which you customize on your own, something you build on your own and try to integrate with Dynamics or something you, you build within Dynamics itself. Okay. So, um, so that in order not to waste much of our time, I'll just take you know, through a couple of things, um, you know, briefly, so uh, so that we can move to the uh, next line. So what we, in Dynamics, every form, this is like a form in Dynamics, right? So here we have a timeline, we have business process flow, assistance, uh, opportunity process, um, it's all of these. And uh, this is uh, a, a typical example of a form of uh, opportunity form in Dynamics uh, for those which I'm going to show you um, in the demo uh, after these um, uh, talks. So here we have opportunities. We have um, the, um, the timeline. The timeline contains your activity, your interactions with, with, uh, with the customer, the person, uh, appointments, phone call, and email, I mean, emails, communication. So how do you record these so that by the time other person is trying to um, get involved, or perhaps, or perhaps you are on leave, so um, the other sales person can actually pick up such a record and try to see what's happening in that, what kind of communication uh, timeline that has that, uh, that has occurred between you and the customer or the person. So the sales, I mean, the business process flow allows you to follow some certain processes uh, during the times of, you know, from your start to finish, um, every organization has the sales process, I mean, processes they follow through to achieve uh, uh, their goals. So this is to optimize uh, and work productively uh, by, you know, involving uh, in this kind of processes. It enables your sales uh, process or sales rep to work more efficiently and effectively when they are dealing with their, the kind of customers, okay? So, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is um, collaboration tools. So, and that is where Opportunity Drive comes in, right? So, SharePoint, OneDrive are part of Opportunity Drive Five uh, integration, uh, part of Opportunity Drive Five, right? So, these are quite resourceful in terms of Opportunity Drive Five. So, you can actually involve, you know integrating with SharePoint where you can have um, to like uh, share documents and also embed, uh, save some, you know, uh, documents. Whatever documents you save or you integrate 
you know, trying to download sometimes download customer files or record, you can actually have to access such record in the um, uh, via SharePoint or OneDrive as well. Okay, so with um, first with um, um, you can use. Uh, okay, let me talk about Teams integration as well. So Teams, when you engage, uh, um, uh, you can always engage other people uh, through Teams, right? So you, through Dynamics, you can across your colleagues. I mean, uh, with your colleague across the business functions and in some other uh, geographical areas, you can assess them these five data, such as uh, record and views directly from uh, within a Teams workspace. Providing the uh, that uh, such users have access to, uh, you know, to that workspace, and you can work collaboratively, uh, collaboratively, with uh, in collaboration with uh, other colleagues as well. So, these are features that we can also uh, collaboration features we can use in with Dynamics Five. So, how about the Power Platform? So, of course, you know the. Uh, the business process and speed up uh, daily activities such as the um, approval processes across the line of business application with uh, automated um, uh, automation, uh, out of the box automation by Microsoft. So, uh, like say, let's say Power Automate, for example, you can build a, a flow that can give in such that you can get a notifications whenever a record is created, or you can um, automate some processes to update some values on fields on the MTC5. Okay, so I'm going to see that um, later on. So we talk about this product catalog. You can add code, uh, uh, code management, those order, invoices, and all that. Okay, so um, this is summary of what you have done. Talk about this in the in terms of sales processes. Um, before we move on to the next um, section, uh, next uh, module, which is customer service. Okay, I think we talk about the life cycles of this. I think I'll talk about those. I'll talk about this. Um, the timeline as it Talk about these stakeholders. How to work with leads, right? So let me quickly talk about this before I jump into asking questions. Okay, let's say uh, that uh, Tunde use internet to search and social network um, networking website to get out some kind of general information about the leads, such as industries um, uh, uh, and also a member numbers of employees and annual revenue. And you know, uh, and all of this information, we're able to gather this information and enter the, all the information into uh, as a lead in the Dynamics CRM. Okay. So with optional integration uh, features with, let's say, application like a LinkedIn Sales Navigator, right? And also talk about the, um, uh, you know, some other features as well. So let's say with LinkedIn Navigator. Like, Navigator can, which can automatically, you know, assist in the research processes. So then let's say today now call this customer to talk about the current situation and potential uh, needs. So during this conversation, he may identify information such as uh, the stakeholders, the, the competitors, uh, the budget information, the estimated revenue, and, and so on and so forth, you know. So, and then and involved in the decision making process. So, so relevant information in uh, in the lead is updated accordingly. And this is how, you know, um, perhaps additional calls and, and some other activities are involved in this to create uh, with the lead. So, with leads, you can you know, do a couple of things and, you know, uh, involve such uh, leads in the processes as well. So we talk about this um, opportunity management, how you're able to manage opportunities in Dynamics CRM. Uh, like I say, opportunity is a potential lead. So in the CRM, this is a form typical form look like. And then also 
I will talk about this already, work with quotations and all that. So uh, in this, we're going to show you uh, the demo of this now. So here on this module, we have able to let you, I mean, you know, to describe the understanding of the sales processes and then the opportunities. And also, um, also we have talked about the sales processes and all that. So before we uh, jump into demo, anyone have a question? Everyone have a question? Is anybody here at all? Hello? Yeah, we're here, Blasi. Okay, yeah, so yeah. I, okay. Yeah, no, no yeah, question for now. Okay, so no question for now. Anyway, everything is understandable. Can we keep flowing or we can stop? Yes. Can we stop from here? We can keep, keep flowing. We can keep flowing. Okay, all right. Okay, all right, fine. So what we what we're going to do here uh in the demo, uh first we're going to um create a lead and before we go to that first, what I want to do first is how you can you get a demo environment uh for yourself. So um let me quickly jump to that. You how do you settle the environment? How do you um uh, get involved in you know, um, to create, so I mean, to deploy the environment yourself. Before you can be involved in all this, and how do you deploy the missile customer engagement? So one of the things I want to see, uh, let me share my screen for you. Uh, other screen, sorry. Okay, here, right? So one of the things we want to do is go to trials. Yeah, there are different ways you can engage yourselves um, in this, right? I'm, I'll register for trial. Here, we want to type here. Sorry. Um, somebody. Oh, can you uh, mute? We'd like everyone to mute. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, I would like you to mute your mic. Okay. So here we have trials dot dynamics dynamics come right trials. So yeah. Okay, I need to put HTTPS. Right. Okay, HTTPS trial dynamics. Okay, let me search for this. Trials. Okay, so here trials right dot dynamic365.com. So for those, let me quickly share this if we are chat. So when you get to that, how do you register for this? So how you can deploy this, right? So we have sales, customer service, free service, uh, project service, uh, automation, finance operation, data center, human resources, right? So you can pick any of these that you need to register for it. So one of the things you want to do that, let me check this. Try environment, you can put your email and phone number you know, and get started, right? So yeah, I select any of these. So for here, you, you can click on get started, right? 
So uh, I click on get started. So you try to sign in, I to sign in. Because I already have an account here, so it's trying to, you know, log me in already. So have anyone, anyone able to try from that angle yet? Trying to come up. Yeah, still okay, on it's fine. sign up. Seems to have a slow network today. Okay, still so let me refresh this page. So trying to come up. Um, Okay, seems to have a slow network. Okay, so um, I hope I have anyone here this. Uh, okay, once again, let me try once again. Try to refresh. Okay, seems I have a very slow network here. Okay. Okay, so let me just quickly show you uh, this is a typical uh, environment of sales. Here we have different kind of uh, applications. Let me try to open it more. So here we have, um, this is a custom app that I, develop, that I developed here. So this is an uh, act of the board solution, uh, commercial banking and some couple of stuff like uh, all this you've seen here. So most in your environment, what are good to see, uh, we are good to see, um, let me search for sales, sales hub. Okay, so here we have, um, Sales hub, uh, sales professional, you know, um, team members, and this is um, with the services, um, some other solutions as well. So here we are looking at the sales hub. So it's still open again. Okay. So here, this is uh, we're trying to provision the environment, right? So if you already have an existing environment. Uh, we're trying to, you know, provision that it will tell you it's going to ask you if you're going to join an existing environment or you're going to create a trial on your own. Okay, so we say create a new trial, create your own trial, create a new trial, for example. So here you can select sales, marketing, or your customer service, free service, project or uh, service automation or you can select all of these. Okay, so here you can change the name of the organization. Yeah, you can change demo purpose. Demo, I think I already have a demo there. So you can submit. Then you complete the setup, right? So after you complete your setup, uh, it should automatically take you to um, Trying to open a new page. Okay. 
you take it so here add me dots so let me test this five So here we have this Power Platform environment. This is Power Platform Admin Center, right? So here I have uh, the environments. So what does this does, right? It encapsulates, um, you know, your environments. You can have as many as environments you have. Here I have production environments. I have uh, default environments, trials as well. So once you provision uh, a production environment or an environment, so automatically you are going to have uh, a default environment, right? So uh, in a default environment, you have you can open up each of these environments. So we have here we have uh, CDS, and then you're able to see number of active users, and this is like analytics or uh, giving you what's exactly you know, happening in that environment, all of the environments, the active users. Yeah, so you see this as a whole, like everything, API calls and execution timeline. So Power Automate, if you have Power Automate in that environment, so it's going to show you, you know, how, you know, how many is um, Power Automate, how many flows, how many processes are being run in that environment, right? The usage and the errors and so forth. Uh, because of time, um, um, I'm just trying to mine the time. Okay, so here we also see, you know, power apps, you know, analytics here. So we also have capacity. You would check environment. The capacity means that um, the number of space we have. So each environment in Dynamics has, um, you know, the uh, 10, uh, 10 gigabytes of file or database and 20 gigabytes of, uh, if I'm correct, you can remember. Okay, so all what we have in total is 32, right? 32, all we have in total is 32, right? So, so you can only see that my environment is overshoot. It's 7,000, over 7,000 uh, percent uh, overshoot the environment. So I have, uh, you know, so which means it's telling me that uh, there are some things I need to remove or, you know, decongest from my environment, okay? So here you see um, from your default tenants, I have uh, my production environment, trial trials environment. So these are the things here you have here. Okay. So here we also have Ram 65 apps. So this will show you show you the solutions you have in your environment. All of the apps you have in your environment. How you gonna see? Um, so we have I have customer service, Omni channel service. Uh, and power apps and so on and so forth. You know, so this is a portal. So the portal um, is like, uh, uh, which there is still maybe later on, is one of the webinars we're going to talk about on the portals. So portal is like uh, a mini website that you have for your support, uh, you know, to engage your customer in terms of other support or in terms of the knowledge based articles that you want your, um, you know, um, your customer to have access to, or in terms of enable you to want your uh, customer to ask to interact with your identity uh, five. So you can always develop a portal to, to do that. Great. So you can open the support here, integration here, and um, so we have a data integration where you can actually integrate um, within dynamics and some other uh, third party um, tool or within dynamic itself, maybe in between the ERP and the CRM, you can integrate uh, this solution together using this data integration. Okay, so um, I also have a data reviews and also have admin centers too, so and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is just typically just to show you how the environment in the platform, uh, you know, 
uh, environment look like. OK, so you can also click to create a new environment yourself. Right, so I want to create a new sandbox. Try subscription base production. Or you can always create multiple, I know, as long as you have, you can test it the name. Let's say uh, demo three. Right. OK, demo three. And then you can try to select all of the sandbox. Uh, production so sandbox. And you can choose a default region. So one thing about one thing about this is I want to select uh, this region. You are selecting a region whereby you want your uh, maybe your data to sit on or something. So um, it's not always easy to change it back. So you have to decide which of the region you want to actually to, to provision environment with. Okay. So here you can decide to create a database for this environment, or if you have enough space. So if I click on oh, next, so it took me to, to this place. Yeah, you can define your URL for this, right? Let's say demo three, demo three environments. You can select your currency. So you can select Nera, even Nera is there, NG, NGN, right? Nigerian. Let's see. Ah, uh, NGN, yeah. So here you can enable the MC5 apps, right? Here from here. So here you include all of the free services, customer service, and you know, any of this in that environment. So um, let's say that you just want to involve uh, project service automation, right? So all these fields are um, grid out because I think I have them environment. I already have an enterprise already. Some of them are with source and all that. So I already have this project operations, the environment. So um, when you click on save, I'm not sure if it's going to have because here it's already exist. Okay. Tell me that it's already exist. Okay, let me put a demos. Okay. Demo three. So this is fine. Okay. Save. Yes, of course. I'm I'm expecting this. Do you know why? You can tell me why. Anybody can tell me why? I'm having this error. Am I communicating to anybody here? I think I'm out of space. What? I'm out of space. Yeah, yes, of course. Because I know I just showed you the environment the other time that um, I was at uh, the environment has been overshoot with some over a thousand, I mean, 7,000 uh, uh, percent uh, overshoot, right? So here, yeah. so that's why I cannot create environment. So on yours, you can be able to create that, right? So this is a quick one. So um, I'm just trying to manage a little bit of time because we are out of time already. And um, so here, this is uh, sys half. Like I showed you that time, this is account, this is contact. We have a dashboard. Uh, okay, this is uh, integration with uh, Adobe. So we'll talk about this later, uh, not now. So here we have a source, right? Lead opportunities and competitors, right? So we have quotation quotes, other invoices, product and sales literature, right? So, it's where, so these are things I added myself, right? The marketing um, and the goals, forecasts, and case management as well. So here, the first thing I want to show you is the accounts, right? So here, let me just open up this. I'm not quite sure I'm having slow network. Okay. 
people usually have this knowledge. I'm not quite sure I'm having it. Okay. Okay, so I just want to show you a few things before we. Okay, still trying to load. Ah, why am I going to the network today? Um, fresh. Okay, I'm just trying to refresh your environment. Okay, so um, so this is a typical example of a form that I tried to show you at a time, right? So here we have the um, the few. This is form. Uh, this is standard form uh, for for this account, which is um, what kind of mind when I mention account at a time? What I mean by account? Can they mind me? That's a company or an organization. Yeah, that's fine. Cool, great. Uh, you guys are following. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, um, well, I mean by account number because this is I customized the form a little bit. Trying when I was trying to test some things there, right? So I can change the form. Okay. So let me say, um, let me choose the form that you can actually. Okay, account for interactive experience. So here you can see the list of forms I have. I have so many different forms. I can customize. Can you see it's quite different from the first one? I can change the forms and anytime. Like I can have different form based on uh, what I want to achieve with, right? So here, what I mean by account name, the company, and the phone number, the website. Uh, um, um, okay, so this is. Um, uh, this is timeline, right? So timeline is um, um, is um, uh, idea of communication, your communication communication activities with the uh, the customers or with the account. Okay, so you can always, I know, have that uh, communication being tracked, track in the timeline okay so you can get a new form uh, create a new form i mean a new record and see all of this here so another thing i want to show you is let me say you want to create a test account right let's say um uh, demo and uh and co company And I can provide a phone number and the website at okay, sorry, uh, demo.com and then primary contact, right? So 
Yes, um, one thing about dynamic is that it's good. Uh, you first, one of the things you want to do is to save first. So when you save, any other um, fields can be opened for you to do a proper um, uh, filling, uh, populating other fields as well. You can also click on details, rise more details about the company, and you see the currency that we use in this environment is sterling. You can actually change the the currency that as well. Different kind of currency you can use Australian dollars and you know Europe. You can change to naira if you want, depending. So this kind of customer now is using. You know, you are building this kind of person. I mean, this environment, this customer, a Nera uh, with Nera um, exchange, right? Okay, so now you can click on save. Yeah. So, um, so now we want to add a contact to to this to this company. So, like I said must have a contact. I mean, we can have a contact that we interact with in that company, right? So what you can do here is to select if you have, if you have an existing contact or you can create a new contact from here. So when you create a new contact, automatically you are creating a contact from here. So one thing about this Dynamics 5, you can always scan the contact yeah so let's say scan let's scan let's include a business card into this so automatically it will pick up and save let's say that um i have um let me try to open up the cards Just a moment. So I can get this card where I, where I save it. I'm not quite sure. This card is. Okay. So if you have a different cards, right? All these. So I can. I shall pick this card and click on open. So what will happen here automatically to populate the field. So first name, last name, and then what about if I don't have cards still in the system? So automatically I'm going to like um you know import those cards. Can you see the name on the business card? So we have this person. Okay, so this was automatically. I uh, also pick the the title, the job title of the person, and the phone number, right? And also the address. All of these were based on. So what, what's the work of here? Like I was mentioning the other time, is is the AI, right? The artificial intelligence. This is an embedded solution, embedded solution, in the dynamic 65 or so. So I click on save and close. So here he's telling me that I already have this person here, so that I don't need to create a new one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cancel. Then I'm going to cancel this one, this card. Then I'm going to look for the person, Jenny, right? Save. So you're going to save here. I'm not quite sure I'm having bad net talk this morning. So uh, let me close some few tabs. Some few tabs.
Now everything was working perfectly this morning. Quite sure what we have all this. Okay, so I have this contact being saved already. So what I did, what happened here? I said that the account was created by who? By me, right? So this is to keep track of what about things that happen here. Okay, so um, let's also go to um, just a moment before we go. I'm trying to check something. So let's go back to contacts account. Sorry. So here you see, you can I click on these are views in the, in the CRM views. When I click on all these, click on company, all the companies. You see all the views. So this is where you can see how many view, how many um, contacts their accounts they have here. 156, right? So you can keep on. And also you can search for demo. Let's say we created demo the other time, and let's search for the company. You can see that we have this, right? So um. Let me talk about the contact as well. So if I click on all contacts, so if I try to find Jenny, we created Jenny at that time through an account. You can search for here. And you can see Jenny Smith, right? With that company name and the contact. So here, um, I can also create a new contact. So when I create a new contact, I see the phone number, the primary contact, if they have all our contact as well. Sorry, yeah, here, yeah, yeah. Create a new contact. So um, let's say, um, Hamid, okay. Uh, okay, so I can decide to create here account name. So account name is still the company, right? I can create, I can say first. Okay, I have, okay, okay, okay. There's a script here, uh, the custom script here. That I've uh, put into this, this space. Okay, it's giving me an error. Okay, so it's fine. So here I can take a spot here. Save it already. Scripts. So here I can also change the contact form. I can choose uh, any of these. First of all, interactive experience, I can choose any of these, right? So you can see that form is has a different form with this, right? So I can include uh, my middle's name, my gender, you know. Here yeah, I can include employees. Employees means what? Employer means what? The company is still the same thing as company. You can try to take this uh, data belt, contact. So you can actually customize the forms to include all of these, right? Place of belt and all that about the persons, right? So then you click on save. So another thing I want to show you uh, because of time is quotation. Here I have a quotation. So the person is seen as a lead. Um, if, let me create a demo first. So I have created uh, a, 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 an account. I have created also a contact. So these people have interest in buying, uh, interested in a product or something. So what I need to do, the first thing I need to do is to, you know, when I have contacted the person. So let me show you uh, first thing here. Uh, let's say an account. And uh, let me search for demo and company. So demo and company. So here in the timeline, 
I can send the person email, I can make a phone call, right? So I can book an appointment with the person. So these are activities. Can you see this? Activities. So let me say I want to call this person or I have already called this person. So what I done, you can choose the direction, right? Is it outgoing that you are calling out or the person calling actually? So you see, call from Jenny to me. So if I'm calling out, it means what? I'm calling from me to Jenny. So what I need to do that uh, I called uh, contacted contacted uh, Jenny. Okay. So what I do, I call to find out description called. I called to find out if she's instead. Our new tires. Okay. So, um, a new software. Software. This is software. Okay. So, uh, how long did I, uh, what's the duration of the call with the person? Let's say like uh, five minutes uh, or something. Right. So, um, is a priority or no normal? So we can click on this. Can you see the company regarding this? We can click on OK. Seven close. So what happened here? So can you see this? It's it's record the track that I call to find out if she's interested, right? Likewise, if I send an email, so it's, it's going to record that as well. If I send an email to Jenny. So, and then I can, I can Hello, anyone hear me yet? Since I went off for quite a while. Sure. Okay. All right. So here I'm sending to who? To this company, right? Uh, and. Who is the person in the company? Jenny, already if I sent her out, she's already there. Okay. Um, let's say a quotation. Uh, let's say um, interest. Okay. Okay, let's say about our products, right? Uh, our products okay, here I can decide to you know uh, sitting here okay uh, hello the journey I send you know like a demo I include my signature and so and I click on send okay So when I click on send, as it is, um, what it does is that you're going to send an email to, to the person. And then when the person receives the email, the person uh, will actually, um, OK. OK, this is why it's not sending, because the person email is not, it's not correct, right? So because I did not include the right email. So if I try to include my email, let's say, OK, in Jenny, what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to change Jenny email. I click on Jenny contact. Then I'm going to change my email to my own email. Um, email. Let me find out this email. Okay, so this person email is not there. So let me say this. Okay, let me put it to admin. So okay, no, no, let me put it there. 
at Gmail. Okay. So this is right. It changed. <laughs> I mean, okay, so I click on save, save and close. Yes, oh, you find out that there's an email already. Okay, let me click on cancel. Let me change the email. Because I have email already in existence. Um, what email should I put there? Okay, let me put this, right? Okay, then I click on save and close. Mm. Let's see what's happening here again. So yeah, feel free to stop me if you have any questions or anything. You can feel free to stop me and ask questions, okay? So duplicate record found, right? Okay. Um, should we continue that way? Let's continue. Okay, let's let's save it like that because this is a demo environment. So. Uh, to not to not save, right? It's not going to save because it is. Um, let me say. Let me say for me at Gmail. Okay. Go save and close. Yeah. Ah, uh, thank God. At last. <laughs> So what happened in this company? So here, um, I'm going to send an email, right? Okay, so here it's trying to show that I've sent an email the other time, right? Because the email was not corrected, so I was able to correct the email. So not quite sure. It is an attempt to send an email, okay? So here, so I actually sent an email, right? So now I have this track already. I have a Jenny, I have a contact now uh, about the quotes. Okay. Uh, anyone else able to um, provision the trial environment? Mine has not even gone through since it was just rolling. Oh, because of network, right? I wouldn't know, but I'll, I'm connecting straight to you, and um, I don't know if it is a privilege or something. It was just rolling since, so it has really not connected. Um. Okay. So, did you uh, insert your email? I did. Did yeah. Yes, I did. Can you try to refresh I, the page? Actually, actually uh, inserted um, even my official email that I use at work. Okay. But it's, it's still rolling, yes. Okay. Is there something you can refresh the page or you can duplicate the tab and refresh the duplicated one? I've done it um, several. Uh, I guess that could be a network or something. But I'm getting some other. Um, I still, I still, I'm browsing and I'm getting some other uh, requests uh, delivered. Is it possible to, to to send a screenshot or something so I can? Okay, I, I, I can share that. That's a minute. So okay, so while you're doing that, let's continue some of these things. Yes. Yeah. Any other person who was able to successfully uh, provision the environment yet? Is anyone able to successfully provision the environment? Uh, anybody here at all, apart from uh, Wally? Hi, I'm in Thank you. Okay. So, okay. Hi, I'm in Okay. Okay, Thomas? No, apart from me. Apart from me, okay. So you can uh, also refer back to this video uh, after perhaps for for, for the uh, um, 
uh, review, we want to review and go back and all that. So, okay, so no problem. Um, here we have a quotation. I've, the Sorry? Okay. I've shared it by the comments. We are seeing here. Yes. So, can you use another browser? You can try to use another browser, like a in private browser. Okay. Um, like I E or Edge. Yes. Uh, in private browser, like uh, go here. Click on new in private window. Okay. Oh, uh, if I use Chrome, you can see a Chrome uh, ignition or what? Okay, yeah, path. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this could be could be as a result of catch, right? So, okay. so now let's create a quotation. Like, like let's say um, we talk about lead the other time. Yes, before we go to quotation, talk about lead. Uh, this is a lead. We are going to create a new lead. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, um, yes, we can all put our mic. Okay. So, talk about lead interested, persons interested, right? Okay, I think there's something we need to do. We're talking about qualified lead or not qualified lead, right? So, let me see. Yeah. Trying to check some things. Say demo. Open this guy. Okay, I have okay. Okay, right. So now let's create a lead. So you can create a lead either by automation or by manual. You can create a lead manually or by automation such that you can use the form, external form, or integrate the form to create a lead. Okay. So let's say interested in Dynamics 365. So, so the item base, the work base, you can select an item base because um, now it's service base. It's okay. So, uh, the process name, let's say uh, the Ali. Okay. Job title, to tech lead. And Number and email say wally at gmail.com. Uh, where is the source? Okay, this is a custom one and the company. Okay, um, company is called for let's say So website and so on. City, Lagos, Kenya, Lagos, yeah. Or let's say Nigeria. And um, so we can say that is all and save. So I, don't, I just want us to take us through this learning process for this lead. So now we have created this lead, right? Uh, this process is a lead. Uh, let me change this to a lead form. So here, 
I'm trying to qualify the lead. Can you see here? So when you click on qualify, so there are two things you can happen here to create an account, the company, and also create a contact and also create an opportunity here. So when I convert this, it's going to create this account. So here we have this account, the company, right? We also have this contact, right? So I'm going to qualify the lead so that I can create all the three for me. Yeah. So I still trying to convert such. Okay, I guess that's a little bit. Oh, I'm not sure. Okay, let me try to duplicate this up because of network. So, right, so this is one I have, yes, can you see that? From lead, I was able to call, convert a uh, qualified search lead um, into an opportunity. So this is an opportunity from here. Can you see from this opportunity, we have the sales process, opportunity process here. Uh, let me go back. So here, so we have, So this is the process, right? So is there an existing contact? Yes, or new contact, or new company? Yes or no? So you can sell this to be active. Let's say to be active yet. So here, um, time frame. Okay, still trying to come up. Okay, this person is a qualified lead already. Then we are going to opportunity. Where's the opportunity? It's a qualified lead. Um, okay, next stage. Should be next stage. Okay, I think there's a kind of uh, process here I have <laughs> developed in this place. Uh, let me see. Okay, now it's an opportunity here. Yeah. So that's if something when you customize the environment yeah, and you're trying to do a couple of stuff. <laughs> So, um, customer needs, uh, dynamics is five, right? Source, license, right? Proposed solution, still the same pollution solution, and uh, sales navigation, uh, LinkedIn, sales navigator, okay? So you are able to identify the stakeholders. Then you can select complete, go to the next stage. So the next stage will be like, um, um, are you able to identify the sales team? Just like a process, it depends on the company that you are dealing with, uh, the process of the company. So this is, my, this is the process of my company, for example. Then I click on next stage. So like a process that all these things need to be to be checked to see if actually this process, this process is complete. Okay, the final stage completed, completed, uh, confirmed decision date, 29. Uh, and send thank you. It means that here, are you able to send an email for to the customer that, okay, thank you for interest in your product. 
okay? Then, uh, are you able to debrief the company about this sales? Yes, this opportunity? I say yes, I click on finish. So now, you are able to um, define, uh, to go through this, the processes. So, and this is what we call the business process flow in Dynamics CRM. So, this, and this is sales business process flow. Okay, from lead to opportunity, right? So, um, here, uh, do you have receipt arrangements? Okay, this is for LinkedIn. Um, let me check what other things I need to, to include here. Okay, this is another screen for now. Don't let me bombard you with a lot of information here. So, now, um, so this is the customer name. This is what we propose to the customer. So the next stage now is one, you can qualify the person, this lead opportunity as a one or as a loss. So the person is interested in your products, right? You see the person as a lead and this is a potential sales, right? So let's say we want to do, and we can close this as one. Okay, what was the budget, actual revenue? Let's say 120 pounds. More than 1,200 pounds. Okay. I close this today. I click on close. So once this is closed, we would not be able to edit, right? So what happened in this aspect as well? You see that. The lead is qualified. Um, also, uh, we have registered the budget and our revenue for that. And also, this also recorded as in the timeline as a one, right? So, what is next with this opportunity? With this, right? So, what we're going to do next is to, to start developing a court quotation for this person. Okay, uh, we can try to. You know, create a new quote. Name, uh, the five for sales license. Are we selling uh, pounds or selling? Or you can also include the price list. Okay, um, we've not shown you how to create a price list yet. I see a long process from the back end. So we can just select a price list. Then we can click on save. It's something that is showing that we have not. Okay, what is the potential customer? um let's say jenny let's say jenny or ademola and co ademola okay ah, there's a person hi click on save so now once we activate the code. Okay, what's inside the code? We need to add the products to the quotation. Okay, so there's no product here. Surprised? Wow, oh, really? Okay, let's write the product. That means this price list doesn't have a product. We need to select. A price list that have a product. So let's save. Okay, so here we can add a product. Wow. Oh. Store product here. Okay, so for the purpose of training this class, let's just write the products. No, I need to show you the process of how this is works. Because there's no price, there's no product under that. So we need to select the one that have products. Okay. Let's add a product. Let's have a product too. Okay. Uh, I'm not quite sure why we're having that, but uh, let's write the product. Let's say that this is five line sense. Uh, how many units? 
want uh, quantity, let's say price. Okay, 200. I'm going to add, we can add as many as we want. Added, right? Uh, save. I'm not quite sure why we cannot add this units. Okay. Uh, save quotation. So here in the timeline, we have a product. Price, this is the price. Okay, so what we do after all of this, we activate the court. So after all of this, right? So now we have activate the code. So from this code, we can create an order, right? The person has actually, you know, we've sent the quotation and the person is quite feel good with that. So you can actually export this quotation. Okay. So when you export in PDF format, you can send it to the customer, right? So print code for customer. These are templates, uh, pre, or you can say close uh, quote summary. And you can see our quotation here. Can you see that? So here you can send via email, or you can download, or you can save to SharePoint. Okay. So now let's send our quotation to um, so the person. Who are we sending to? Can you see that? Okay, so from here, we can send to some words here. Kindly find, uh, kindly, hello. Hello, Adi Mola. Kindly find our quotation. Blah, 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 and so on like that. So then you click on send. And of course, Ademala is going to receive this quotation. And then you can download or save to SharePoint if you want. OK, so you're going to receive a quotation. So now he's interested in it. He was OK, satisfied with the kind of price we give him in the quotation list, right? So and I'm going to create another from this. Now he has placed an order. For these products, okay. So here you can set an option. Set the reason we want. We want the order. Yeah. So quotation one, uh, quote one. Then click on. You can select the dates a different date if you want. So now order created successfully. Now from quotes, move to order. Right. So now from here. You can see this is uh, an order. So what do we do with this order? Everything is fine. It looks good. There's no additional. There's no deduction, right? Or if Ademala requested for deduction, we can always change deduction from here. You can double click. Somebody else. Okay. Yes, still loading. Okay, it's taking more time. Okay. So. Yeah, somebody else. Um, it's uh, taking time to load. So if the person actually requested for slash in the quotation, we can actually say like from 200 to 150. 
Ah, this is only 150. 180 pounds. Uh, and then you click on save. I, so actually this will actually take the flex. Then you can save and close. So now what do we do with this order? Right, from this order, we can, oh, this is order. This is not save and close yet. Okay, so here, we can also submit this order. Okay, we finalize uh, this quotation, everything's fine and okay. So then, okay. So now either we cancel if the person, person is no more interested or we can click on submit if you want to continue, submit the order. Then from this order, so what do we do with this order? Okay, what's the next with this order? Okay, is to create an invoice from this order. Okay, so what do we do? Then you go to invoice. Here. So from invoice, we can create a new invoice. And then... Let's see what's great. Okay, so uh, I think you should be able to create uh, invoice from order. Uh, we have a little bit, little bit slow network. Okay, so we had the sales license, right? Um, here, you should create a, an invoice. Uh, there's something I want to check, okay. So from here, you can create an invoice. So we select and then create an invoice. So we just have a few minutes, like five minutes to finish. I just want to finish this process to see how this thing works. Taking much time. Okay, so let's create an invoice once again. Taking much time to take. Okay, um, not quite sure. Okay, oh yeah, the network. The network, if you let me refresh this page. So select. Okay, so there's an issue here. So let's create invoice directly. So we can create a new invoice. Okay, so it's licenses. And then who is the customer? Ademola. Right? Okay, and then price list is very key. Okay. So click on save.
so this is taking a little bit of time. Okay. So here we have uh, defined um, total amount of the uh, including shipping, let's say 200, 200 pounds, right, including shipping. All right, so you click on save. Ah, uh, really? Fresh. Say two hundred dollar. Okay, I think something is wrong. Okay, so so usually you can actually um, let me see recalculate. This is works. Since a couple of things are not working here, <laughs> no mind. Sometimes that's why you face these challenges. Sometimes, okay. We have another. I should be able to create an invoice from this order, but not quite sure what happened. Okay, okay. Well, it's a little process. I have to tell you what you're doing. Okay. Yeah, because I've created so many. Let's create another. Let me see the drafts. All of this. Let me see from this. Talks so bad. Okay, so these are others. Let me create one more time. Okay. Let's put an error card. Okay, let me see if an invoice has been created already. Okay, okay, so um let me let me check one more time. And based what time? So I'm not quite sure what happened there or something I can check this later, but um, so it's fine. So this is how we can actually create an invoice. When you create an invoice, I'm trying to change this, though, but it's not changing. That's quite sure. Why is not changing? Mm. Right, I want save twenty dollars. Save. Okay, this is not calculating. Okay, so um. Anyway, I'm going to look at that problem. There's a problem there. So anyway, this is uh, where you can add a product. Okay, so when you uh, I've created an invoice already, and inside this invoice, you have a shipping address where you can actually, uh, it is something that you can ship. The item you want to ship uh, is uh, it's a physical item. You can actually uh, send through this uh, to the address location, and then add that through the HR, or you can also define your, you can define your own um, shipping method and payment terms, right? Okay, so. Um, then where you can add a product, you can add different kind of family product or add a product here. So you're going to talk about this maybe later or uh, when we have a next uh, training section regarding uh, sales. Okay, so I think from here we have come to the end of the class for today.
uh, we are able to talk about the customer service, but in the next section, um, we are going to talk about the customer service. So from this exercise, we're able to create a new lead, qualify the lead as an opportunity, and also we're able to manage a sales opportunity, um, manage a quote, manage order and invoice, right? So um, I think uh, with this, we have come to the end of the class, though, we stated that this class is going to be an hour, but uh, at the end of the day, we ended up in the um, two hours, right? So anyone have a question? Okay. Um, I'm like, these are buffering. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fine. All right. So, I so I have a question, but okay. not directly about um, sales. Generally, I, I want to understand how subscription works with um, 365. Is it per tenant or per environment? That's one. Then secondly, how do you monitor your subscription level um, from the, which, which of the portal do you assess it from? Without you waiting for Microsoft to send you 